I'm coming from a Christian worldview. And as Christians, our calling is to change the world around us. It's not just to have a quiet little Christian community. It's to go out there and change the culture in which we live, to affect it in a positive way. That's how 12 apostles, 12 men, changed the world because they didn't have a thinking of, gee, we can't make a difference. I mean, can you imagine the 12 apostles, especially after Jesus is crucified, you know, and everything's going wrong, and they would have said just, you know, let's hang it up, man. We can't make a difference. There's only 12 of us. You know, nothing's going our way. They didn't think in those terms. They knew they had a life-changing message, and they went out, and they changed the world in which they lived. We face a critical juncture, I think, in, in the course of, of this country. Either we, as people of goodwill, vote, reclaim the culture, reestablish our moral values, and move forward, or we stagger and we fall. I think a lot of it is just people not really understanding what the laws really like, really are like in our country. Um, that abortion is legal throughout all nine months of pregnancy for any reason. People don't realize that's really what the laws are like. So we do have a real health care issue in my view, and there are some people who would suggest that universal publicly funded or socialized medicine is really the answer to that. You know, I'm not an expert in whether we should or should not do that, but here's what I know. What I know is it's being presented to us bundled with uh, unrestricted, publicly funded access to abortion. And um, that is not a moral option that Christian people can accept. The Freedom of Choice Act is a radical piece of legislation that if it gets passed, uh, would literally set us back three decades or more in the fight for life uh, in this country. It would undermine every advancement that the culture of life has been able to successfully claim. Billy. Well, a lot of the problem that's happening today, particularly in the whole issue of, of, of marriage and family, is that we think, act, and process life like the pagan culture in which we live. Jesus said that people of faith should be defining the culture around them. But what we've done is we've allowed our culture to define us. Well, the, the very foundations of our society are based on the concept that marriage is a relationship between one man and one woman. So the, the very basis for our society is at risk. We really want our children to know one man, one woman is what we support. There's never been a culture, there's never been a civilization in the entire history of the world that has ever blessed, has ever sanctified, has ever endorsed, let alone civilly recognized same-sex marriage. And it is a slippery slope. Marriage and family are the creation principle. And if, if we adhere to them, it is for our good. If we abuse them, it will be to our ultimate harm. Pledge of Allegiance. That's an issue in schools now. Well, in my school, it's a big issue. Um, a lot of students didn't want to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance because it said God in it. And I was the only one in my class at the time who was standing up, putting my right hand over my heart and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Teachers can give you a hard time, but at my school, most of my teachers will know that if they're trying to give me a hard time, that I'm gonna fight for it and I'll, I'll take it all the way. So most of the time it'll be like, you know, they'll give you like a smirk or something, but you just have to be like, it doesn't matter what they think, you know, just do what you believe. It's amazing because they proclaim their tolerance and then obviously they're not tolerant when we take a biblical Christian view. And it strikes me as, inherently inconsistent and reflects that they don't really have truth behind them. They have opinion, but not truth. It really rests uh, in the hearts of our people and in the strength of our families. The affirmation you get, hopefully, in the family for each child as we're raising them, that you are eternally significant, that you are totally unique, that God has gifted you and you have a contribution to make not just to our family as you're growing up, but to your world. If you elect a Christian to office, they're gonna carry their values and their views with them to office. You, you can't literally separate religion from a person. And I would point out that that's true on the other side too. The liberal viewpoint is almost like a religion 
they don't check their liberal views when they get elected to office either. I think it is absolutely imperative that, that people think through their own principles, clearly identify their own values, look at what is happening in the culture and say there are people running for office whose values, as far as these people running for office, whose values equate to the values that I hold so dearly. Those will be the people that I will support. You know, whether it's education or economics or whatever, how they view life and how they view family, it's gonna make a difference. Democracy is all about people choosing who runs our country. So if people are choosing somebody that they don't even really know what they stand for, that just kind of defeats the purpose, you know? If we don't vote, then we have no right to complain. If we do vote, that sleeping giant, that is the moral majority, can change this country. Don't let anyone stand in your way. Believe in what you believe in and stand up for what's right. Every vote counts, every vote makes a difference, and it is never too late to reclaim our culture. It's perfectly appropriate that we should have representatives who represent the values that we hold.